Have you heard about Wush? It's not just any random name, but a game changer for transportation in Indonesia. It's a sleek train zooming at 350 kilometers per hour, connecting Jakarta and Bandung. That's like traveling from one end of a football field to the other in just over a minute. That's crazy, right? If you want to see what this incredible tech design has to offer, watch this video to the end as we introduce to you Wush. Kereta Sepet Indonesia's first high-speed rail. Kereta Sepet Tri Indonesia high-speed rail is a remarkable transportation project that's been making waves in Indonesia. But don't worry, we'll keep it simple and easy to understand. So hop on board and let's get started. The reason for the name Wush Wush is Indonesia's very first high-speed rail, and it's making quite a splash. It covers a distance of about 140 kilometers, linking the bustling city of Jakarta to the charming town of Bandung in West Java. Now, here's the exciting part. You can travel from Jakarta to Bandung in less than one hour. That's quicker than some folks take to get ready in the morning. Each Wush train comes with eight cars, and it's like a little village on wheels, able to carry up to 601 passengers. That's a whole lot of people on a fast-paced adventure. And here's a fun fact. The name WUSH is actually an acronym. It stands for Waktu Hemat Operasi Optimal System Hebate, which translates to time-saving optimal operation. Great system in Indonesian. Catchy, right? It's like they wanted to make sure you know you're in for a smooth and efficient ride. So, whether you're a local looking for a quick getaway or a traveler eager to explore, Wush is here to whisk you away to your destination in no time. It's riding in style on the Wush. And price tag. So, when you hop on board, you've got options. Three classes of seats to be exact. First class, second class, and even VIP seats for those who want a bit of extra pampering. First class is the top-notch experience. You get more space to stretch out, luggage storage for your stuff, and a comfy footrest. It's like having your own little oasis of comfort. Plus, everyone, no matter the class, gets to enjoy in-train Wi-Fi and USB charging. That means you can stay connected and powered up throughout your journey. Imagine streaming your favorite shows or getting some work done while you zip along at high speed. Now let's talk about the price tag. For first class, you're looking at an estimated one-way fare of around 300,000 rupiah, which is roughly $19.40. It's a bit pricier, but hey, you're getting the royal treatment. For second class, it's a tad more budget-friendly at about 250,000 rupiah. You still get a comfy ride, just with a bit less frill. And if you're feeling extra fancy, there are VIP seats available for around 350,000 rupiah. That's the premium experience right there. And we dare not forget the initial free ride offer. During the launch ceremony, they surprised everyone by saying rides will be free until mid-October. Who doesn't love a little freebie? It's the perfect chance to try out the different classes and see which one suits you best. So, whether you're all about the luxury of first class, the comfort of second class, or the VIP treatment, Wush has got you covered. And with in-train Wi-Fi and USB charging, you'll be traveling in style and staying connected. How do the locals feel? People have different feelings about Wush. Some folks had a great time during the test rides and are looking forward to using it often. They say the ride was enjoyable and are excited about the convenience it brings, especially for those with family and friends in Bandung. They see it as a way to connect more easily. On the other hand, there are others who think the tickets are a bit too pricey. They tried the test ride because it was free, but they're not sure if they'll choose Wush. For regular trips, they believe other modes of transport like shuttles or buses might be more cost-effective for their journeys to Bandung. It's fascinating to see how different perspectives shape the way people perceive this new mode of transportation. Some are ready to embrace it wholeheartedly, while others are taking a more cautious approach. This diversity in opinions reflects the range of experiences and priorities among the locals. After all, when it comes to choosing how to get from point A to point B, there's no one-size-fits-all solution. It's all about finding what works best for each individual, based on their needs and preferences. And that's what makes discussions like this so valuable. It helps us understand the various factors that influence our transportation choices. What's the economic impact of this high-speed rail project? Bandung, where the rail ends, is known for its delicious food and is an important spot for industries. With Wush, it's expected that more tourists and business people to flock to the city. That means more people enjoying the local cuisine and more deals getting done. It's like a win-win situation. 
Project. The folks at Coretta Sepet Indonesia, China, the team behind the rail, along with Indonesia's coordinating Ministry for Maritime Affairs and Investment, are pretty optimistic about the economic effects. They're even developing new commercial areas near the Jakarta station and the next stop, Karawang. That means more places for people to stay, shop, and enjoy. But there are some skeptics. Some experts think that while the high-speed rail is something to be proud of, it might not cause a huge shift in the economy right now. They believe people will still stick to their cars, especially since public transport in Bandung isn't as reliable as it could be. For these experts, the real game-changer would be if the high-speed rail connected Jakarta and Surabaya, a city that's quite a bit further east. That's around 700 kilometers. Now that would really shake things up economically. So, in a nutshell, the economic impact of Wush is a bit of a mixed conceptions. There's excitement and optimism about the potential growth in Bandung's tourism and business sectors. But there are also those who think the real game changer would be if it connected even bigger cities. Only time will tell how this high-speed adventure will shape Indonesia's economic landscape. What's coming next for the Wush? Kereta Sepet Indonesia High-Speed Rail. President Joko Widodo has some grand plans in mind. He's not stopping at Bandung, oh no. He's got his sights set on connecting even more major cities. This is about a network of high-speed trains zooming across Indonesia, linking vibrant cities and cultural hubs. President Widodo envisions extending the rail beyond Bandung to reach places like Kertajati, Yogyakarta, Solo, and all the way to Surabaya. That's like creating a super-fast highway for trains. Now, why is this such a big deal? Well, imagine the possibilities. People could easily hop on a train and explore these incredible cities in no time at all. It opens up a whole new world of opportunities for travelers, business folks, and adventurers alike. So let's break it down a bit. Kertajati is known for its bustling airport and potential as an economic hub. With the high-speed rail reaching here, it could mean smoother connections between air and rail travel, making it a breeze for both tourists and business travelers. Yogyakarta, on the other hand, is a cultural treasure trove. From ancient temples to vibrant markets, this city has it all. Extending the rail here would mean easier access for people wanting to soak up the rich heritage and artistic vibe of Yogyakarta. Solo or Surakarta is another gem. Known for its traditional Japanese culture, Solo is a city of elegance and history. Imagine being able to hop on a train and explore the palaces, museums, and markets that define this unique city. And finally, Surabaya, the bustling heart of East Java. This city is a powerhouse of industry and commerce. With a high-speed rail connection, it would be a game-changer for businesses and commuters, streamlining travel between the capital and this economic powerhouse. President Wododo's vision is an exciting prospect, and we'll be keeping a close eye on the tracks to see where this high-speed adventure takes the country next. What's the budget for the high-speed rail? All right, let's talk about the price tag for this high-speed rail project. It's a big deal, and the numbers might surprise you. The Jakarta-Bandung High-Speed Rail project began in January 2016 and is set to start operating commercially in October 2023. This railway covers a distance of 142.8 kilometers at a top speed of 350 kilometers per hour. Originally, they thought it would cost around $5.5 billion to make the Jakarta-Bandung road a reality. But as things progressed, the expenses went up a bit. Now, the estimated cost is between $7.2 billion to $7.5 billion. That's a significant increase, isn't it? It's an ambitious venture aimed at significantly reducing travel time between Greater Jakarta, home to over 34 million people, and Greater Bandung, with a population of 11 million. This railway will serve a grand total of 45 million individuals. Now you might wonder why the price went up. Well, building something as complex as a high-speed rail involves a lot of factors. There are materials, technology, labor, and unexpected challenges that can pop up along the way. And when you're talking about a project of this scale, even small changes can lead to big differences in the final cost. During construction, 11 train sets of the KCI C400 AF model, a derivative of CR400 AF, were employed. These train sets, manufactured by CIRC King Deo Safang, are a vital part of this high-speed rail initiative. The railway is constructed on a double track and is electrified, making it capable of achieving speeds of up to 350 kilometers per hour. 
This puts Indonesia in an elite group of countries with the fastest commercially operated railway networks in the world, on par with China. The project has faced its fair share of challenges. These include delays in land acquisition, leading to a temporary halt in construction due to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, despite these hurdles, progress steadily continued. By September 2022, construction had reached an impressive 60%, and land acquisition had achieved a commendable 100%. So there you have it, a simple and exciting overview of WUSH, Kereta Sepet Indonesia High Speed Rail. It's changing the way people travel in Indonesia, and who knows, it might just be the first of many high-speed adventures in this beautiful country. Thanks for joining us on this thrilling ride. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more updates. Thanks for being here and we'll catch you next time.